set and of course for the Meg. Welcome back to Dig the Game. I am doing the Meg boss battle uh, just independently in a video. Uh, I've already done it in my series, but I figured, eh, you know what, let's come back and revisit it. I, I really stumbled uh, when I did it the last time, and I was just trying to figure out the mechanic for how to do it. And what I found was it was way easier for me, anyway, uh, doing this boss battle and staying on my raft. All the videos I saw had people jumping in the water with the Meg, and uh, yeah, it just did not work out well for me. So we're going to try this just going at it with the boat. Get there in a hurry. And I'm going to try to dance around my raft, because it worked for the squid. Uh, I think it's going to work for the Meg as well. And it just became morning, so I'm hoping that I can actually... Kill this thing during the day, show its death during the day, and uh, not get a storm. I, I, I just, everything that could have gone wrong when I was doing this in the Let's Play series just went wrong. About to come up any second now. I want to park a little bit away from the whale. Just because if there is a storm, I do not want to get caught on the whale. All right, let's get this party started. Did I miss? There we go. I can see you now, sucker. Oh, this is so much easier. So much easier than last time. I got tons of ammo. Okay, he seems to be fairly predictable so far. Oh, two. Yeah, we've already got the Meg halfway down. Where'd you go? There. Because I believe it's supposed to come out and... Um, I try to take you off your raft. But I don't know if my raft is too big or if it's just because I keep peppering them with arrows too much that it's not really able to retaliate. Alright, never mind what I said about it being predictable. Oh my gosh. Give me my... Give me my spears. No! They're all gone. Alright. We got a rudder part and we can build the uh, thing for the thing thing. Yeah, the trophy. So I went through 6, 12, 18. I lost 18, sorry. I went through more than that, but I did get some back. But that... <laughs> that was uh, easy. I'm still a little bit freaked out about the uh, squid. And this is another permadeath game. But... Yeah, let's, uh, let's truck on back to base, and I'm going to show what I've got built right now. 
And I guess since uh, I'm doing this, I'm going to do my tips and tricks. Let's just make this my tips and tricks video. So I've got a few things I want to cover. And I'm, I wrote them in an order, so I'm going to cover them in this order. And I did set a couple things up at base so I could demonstrate those tips. So we're going to do a quick little time lapse, uh, a little bit of music. And uh, the music I'm using for this, uh, Logan, my son, actually made this music. So uh, I, I, he's doing really good. I keep telling him he's got to make me some more music for the, uh, for the tracks here, or for the videos. But I'll see you back at base. What you're going to notice in this video is that my base looks very very different uh, and the reason why is I've already finished recording all the episodes for the let's play and so I'm not oh sorry I've been waiting to do this joke I've been waiting to do this joke I'm sailing I'm sailing okay I feel better now I did the joke all right uh so you can notice the base looks a lot different, and it's because this is not my base from my Let's Play. This is from a new game, and uh, I'll cover that in uh, the 11th tip, but this is 11 tips for Stranded Deep, and I thought I would give them now instead of waiting for the Let's Play to finish. I, I do want to let you know I have beat the game, um, I have done all the boss battles, and I flew out, and I, I'll, I'll let that play out in the Let's Play, I don't want to give anything away. But I do want to point out these tips and tricks that I did learn throughout playing the game. So the first thing I want to start with is tip one, farming. So you can see I have tons of potatoes. Like, I don't even need to pick these potatoes. They're probably all just going to spoil because I have bins full of them in there. Uh, the yucca fruit, uh, we use to plant the yucca trees. And this is going to give us unlimited fuel. Uh, this is pretty much all I've needed. I haven't really needed to pick any more than that. I complain for a long time about the Kura fruit. I could not find it in my Let's Play. And it really irritated me because I couldn't get the achievement of having all of the plant uh, farm crops on my island without this. This was all I was missing. Uh, but I did find it almost immediately when I started this new game. But uh, farming, I want to talk about watering crops. You'll see in my Let's Play that a lot of times what I'll be doing is I'll, I'll plant one of these. You'll see these are sort of short on water. And I'll go around and continually keep topping them off. You don't need to do that. The trick of it is, is what you want to do is be around your island when there's a storm. The storm will fill your crop, crop plots, but not if you're off the island. So that's, uh, that's my first tip is watering these is insanely easy. Don't even worry about topping them off. Just just maybe, you know, get them up a little bit and then wait for the next storm and these things will fill right up. So that's the first tip. Tip number two, spoiled versus non-spoiled. So you can see here, I have regular potatoes. I can eat these potatoes because they're not spoiled. Doesn't hurt me, gives me a bunch of food. Cool beans. But if I go inside, You're going to see I have uh, the fuel box is full of spoiled potatoes. I can use these spoiled potatoes for fuel. So don't throw away the potatoes when they spoil. Store them up so you can load up your fuel, fuel still and have plenty of fuel. Tip number three, raft storage. Uh, I, I realized that uh, I just posted episode five and I'm going to post this one tonight just so you know that I'm not incompetent and that I actually figured these things out. Also, with the button mashing, I've moved my mic to a stand, so it's no longer sitting on my desk. So you're not going to hear any of the button mashing that I typically do, and I do apologize for that. Uh, I'm, I'm always working to improve on my videos. But raft storage, the storage uh, or container shelf that I built in episode 5, took me forever to figure out how to use it. But you can put them on your raft, and this makes such an easy way of being able to get tons of goods back and forth. And 
yes there's a storm so this is going to prove our tip number one <laughs> but the next thing is tip number four i want to talk about steering the raft you'll notice that i was under engine power most of the way typically what i'll do is i'll use the engine whenever i'm leaving my dock because the engine can go in reverse so we can back up with the engine we cannot with the sail so if I need more precise steering though, I use the sail and the rudder. The engine has a big turning radius, at least for this raft size. <clears throat> I could put two more uh, container shelves on this, but I don't know, I sort of like this and I'm carrying three on me anyway, so it's not a huge deal. Tip number five, climbing up these boats. In my video uh, series, I talked about one island I landed on and I parked my raft like right next to the boat so I could get on it. Well, there's a trick with these. I'm hoping this one has them. It might not because of this, being able to get up here. Uh, this doesn't have it. What you want to look for is on the rails, you'll see like a yellow bar and those yellow bars can be used for climbing. So if you have to climb up on a boat that like maybe is inaccessible because it's sitting up too high out of the water, those will be on those boats. So you just hold the jump button next to those and you'll hop right up on the boat. So you don't need to creatively park a raft and, and MacGyver it to get on it. Tip number six. And uh, the next two tips, uh, six and seven, I want to give a special shout out to uh, Scarlet Tardis. Uh, hopefully I'm saying that right. Uh, for your comments on the videos. I really appreciate those and uh, I, I do want to talk about what he had mentioned with stacking crates first. So I was doing all kinds of weird stuff moving my crates around but if I wanted to just make a quick easy stack of these I stand still and I drop them and boom I have a nice little stack of my three crates. So pretty sweet. Uh, this is uh, another thing I sort of touch base on it a little bit but uh, tip number seven and I believe uh, Scarlet Tardis had commented on this as well, but uh, just being able to carry these crates on me when I go to other islands, then I can drop them and I can fill them up with stuff and it doesn't take up my inventory. And you can tell I was on a, on a clay run. Moving on, tip number eight. You'll see that I have this nifty little dock here. And I build a dock in the uh, Let's Play, so you'll probably see it there. But if you're playing along and, and you want to know how to build this dock, this is ugly, I know. There are other videos on how to make like round buildings, but I just thought it looked sort of cool. And I just wanted to have a dock at the end. I'm going to build the walls up in this. I, I have one achievement left, and that's to build everything on one island. So you'll notice I have a little bit of a hodgepodge with my brick walls and such because I'm trying to build everything at least once but let's drop down here because let's see how I built this dock so what I had to do was first I had to plant uh, a foundation and I had to figure out where I could put the foundation and then build a half wall on it and have these ceiling or the floors attached to that top of the half wall where it was about at water level now it's a storm so we've got some swells so it's not going to but, but when the water's calm, this is almost just, just a touch above water level. So it's a pretty slick little design, and I can jump up on it. Tip number nine. So you'll notice I have a lot of meat storage here. I have my small meats, my medium, and my large. And then I've also put some extra rations because my ration box is full. But let's say I catch, because um, you, you can kill the sharks and drag them up on land. Right now I just have these guys, the giant groupers. But I didn't skin them. I just pulled them out of the water and left them on the beach. This means anytime I want medium meat, I can just come over here, get two medium meat, stack up sharks, leave them on the beach. Um, I, I chopped up all my sharks so I don't have any to show you right now but you can drag them up and they never spoil so if you want to store uh, future raw meat without uh, having a spoil just pull them up on the shore leave them there 
and you can harvest them whenever you want. And that's a good leather storage too. What's up, Mr. Pig? Yes, I had to have another pig. I haven't named this one like I did my other one, but... Um, oh yeah, spoiler alert, I get a pig later. Uh, shoot, I should have thought about that one. Next one is mapping. I start going crazy about mapping later in my series, and, and you'll see uh, how I do all that. But um, for now, I'm just going to tell you my technique is, I, I don't really have it to show here. Could have stopped at one of those islands. But if I did it here, I would label this bed the name of the island. Every one of these islands around here has a shelter, and then I use the label maker, and I throw a name on it. So I'm going to pull up the map right now. That's going to show this map, and, and I talk about using my map as a reference. You would have to have the seed number, which I left on this map in the upper right-hand corner. I can't remember if I had it on my other map for my Let's Play. Um, but anyway, uh, I, I mapped out an actual grid angle on, on the Let's Play, so you'll see that. This one, I'm, I'm being a little bit more relaxed with it, uh, because I'm just trying to get the final achievements. So I do have to beat the bosses again to get that achievement, but uh, yeah, this is my map, and these are all the islands I've discovered so far. Bang, bang. <laughs> um, and, and each one of those means it has a, an associated shelter. Now, the way I tell what the map island is, uh, many people already know this, but just in case you don't, the way I tell is I build the shelter, and then I save at that shelter. Then I'll exit out of the game, and then I'll go back into the game, uh, well, I'll exit out of that game, and at the main menu, I'll go to the cartographer. Now, the cartographer is where you can get all of the, uh, get the map. So if I pull up the cartographer, I can see the map, I can map out my locations, and if I hover over the red circle, that's where I last saved. Don't be distracted, too. Um, I'm a little scatterbrained. It's a little bit late, and uh, I just had martial arts, so I'm a little tired. Um... The, uh, th there might be two red circles. One is always going to be your home island. So if you establish what your home island is, if you save elsewhere and then you see a red circle on a different island, bingo, that's the island you're at. Find the name, get your label maker, label your shelter with that name, and Bob's your uncle. The last tip I want to give, and I talked about it earlier in the video, the uh, reason why you see this uh, brand new uh, building and this brand new configuration is because I got today... Well, you know what? I don't want to spoil it. I don't, I don't want to say what day I got to. Um, I'll, I'll put that in the follow-up after the Let's Play. There are a couple little short videos that talk about what happened, but essentially the computer froze up and uh, shut off on me. And when it did... When I came back, I went to go into the game, and the game wouldn't load. And it said if I if I when I hit start, it just brought me to the new game dialog. I switched uh, save slots and saw that was the same thing, and I realized my game just corrupted. Just just for safety, just so you don't end up investing a whole bunch of time, and then maybe your computer reboots on you. Uh, it it was it was just heartbreaking to lose that. Thankfully. I was able to finish the game uh, and finish the Let's Play. I was really trying to map out the remaining islands and get the achievements anyway, which I'm going to be doing here. But the uh, two locations are, the first one is in Documents. So in your Documents folder, wherever you store your documents. So if you go into this PC, Documents, in the Documents folder, you're going to find a folder called Stranded Deep. Grab the entire folder. I just put a folder on my desktop called SD Backups, and I copy that entire Stranded Deep folder into SD Backups. The next location you want to go to, and this one can be a little bit tricky, uh, is on the root of C, or, um, you know, for me, all my local profile stuff is stored on C. So in, in C Drive Users, you pick your user folder, and in there is going to be a folder called App Data. If you do not see the folder app data, it's because you're not showing hidden uh, folders. That you can go up to view, go over to options, and in options there's a view tab and you can, uh, under hidden files and folders, folder area, it says show hidden, file, hidden files, folders, and drives. Just highlight that, hit OK, 
and you'll see app data. Go into app data, go into the local low folder, and inside the local low folder you will find a folder called Beam Team Games. Those two folders are all you need. So if your game crashes and you lose your save file, you take your backup of those two folders, copy them, restore them back to the uh, locations where they were, and uh, your game is back and you're in good shape. That is all I've got. That is my 11 tips and tricks for Stranded Deep. I might come up with a few more. Um, if I do, I might do another tips and tricks video uh, supplemental to this one. I just told you, um, I guess bonus tip, tip number 12, is how we started the video with the Megalodon fight. We, uh, we killed the Megalodon pretty effortlessly, and uh, we just stayed on a raft and shot it. The eel is the same way. Uh, the squid, the squid, I did the same tactic, but he did yank me off the raft on multiple occasions. But I was able to quickly get back on the raft and uh, just keep peppering him. Once you learn his counterattack, and you'll see that in my Let's Play when I do get to that, he does have a counterattack. Right after you shoot him, he like throws a tentacle at you. And he, that's going to pull you off the raft if you run into it. So what I was doing is I would shoot and strafe. And I didn't avoid it every time, but a lot of times I did. So with that, uh, bear with me on the uh, Let's Play. I know I, there's still going to be more button mashing, but there's some good content, some good uh, white knuckle moments, uh, because this is permadeath, so is that uh, where I almost died. Uh, I want to thank you all for watching again. I hope you enjoyed these, and please, if you have another tip, something I didn't cover in this video, uh, you know, throw a comment on there, and uh, you know, if it's a comment that I think uh, will really help out other players, I'll pin that comment. Yeah, I want to thank you for watching. You all stay safe out there. Have a great day, and we'll see you on the next video.